Putin and Michelle Fenighaus. Today, you'll learn what it takes to be healthy and happy within a stressful world from three experts walking their talk. Here is Lisa, Andrea, and Michelle. Hello, welcome to Healthy View Radio. My name is Michelle Fenikaus, and I'm joined today by my smart and sassy co-hosts, Andrea Beeman and Lisa Lutan. Woohoo! <laughs> hey! So you guys, yesterday I was sort of just meandering through Facebook and I saw a comment from a woman who said she was obese and that years ago she was actually, in retrospect, she could see that she was actually a pretty normal, pretty healthy sized young woman, but she didn't believe that she was. So she proceeded to, in her own words, diet her way to 300 pounds, meaning, you know, she dieted and she gained a whole lot of weight, which certainly happens. That's what happened, sugar. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> the irony. <laughs> yes. So I was thinking, you know, this show is all about escaping the dieting, the yo-yo dieting. And I think the question really becomes like, how, how on earth do we do that? If on one hand we have people who like legitimately, like they have a medically necessary reason why they need to lose weight. Uh, like this woman who's now 300 pounds, mm. how does she escape the idea of dieting when she kind of has to diet or, you know, brain fart moment. Or then on the other hand, we live in a culture where we are constantly sold dieting and an I'm not good enough message, which is how this woman started dieting in the first place. So if, if, if that's the situation, how do we escape it then? What do you guys think? Well, I think people come to me often and say, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. And I say, I'm not about weight loss. I'm going to make you healthier. And weight loss is a byproduct of healthier living and eating. And when we take away that whole diet mentality, you will start losing weight, but you're not going to be so obsessed about it, which is what happens and kind of, you know, confuse your mind and your brain about it. Like there's so much psychology in this. The moment we say to somebody, you can't have that. What do they want? That's what they want. That's what they want. That's what I want. If I can't have it, I, I want it more, right? <laughs> yeah, I agree with Lisa. Um, you know, it, it is, it's a trap. You know, yeah, they feel overweight. They start dieting. They deprive themselves. They don't feel good. I did this myself. And I know you girls probably did it too. You start with the no fat, low fat, and then you go to, but I, I think all of us had gone vegan at one point, right? <laughs> you go for, you take out the animal protein. That was for ethical purposes, but, <laughs> uh, you know, and all of these different, like I look now, the keto, the paleo, the gaps, the this, the that, there's, there's still so much around dieting. And exactly what you said, Lisa, is let's just get people healthy. And then weight loss is a natural byproduct. So, you know, I had somebody say to me just the other day, you know, I'm, I'm done with dieting. I'm done with all that fad. Go, I'm doing the keto. Because <laughs> it's a lifestyle, it's not a diet, right? And I don't have a problem, just to be um, clear, I don't have a problem if you want to give up sugar. I help many people give up sugar. If you want to eat low carb, that's fine. But experiment and feels what's good and do it in a way of feeling good, not feeling deprived. Because the moment we're in deprivation mode, the moment everything tanks and goes spiraling down and we start binging. But if you do something and it feels good in your body and you're feeling like this is something positive, it's going to have a very different impact on you. Like massage. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting a yeah. full night of sleep. Oh, yeah. And these, yeah. Those are two things, actually, I mean, kind of jokingly say that, but those are two things that are connected to weight loss. Yes. Right? Everything's, like, everything is connected. Yeah. Right? Say more about that. Well, all of these lifestyle, exercise, food, sleep, meditation, it's all related to it. Because if we are tired, we're going to crave the not the healthiest foods. If we're stressed, we're not going to crave healthy foods. If we are, you know, feeling lethargic, we're not going to. And so one, even one step in the right direction in any of those areas will start you moving into the right direction in all of those areas, including weight loss. Yes, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, Lisa's a good egg. 
said that so well. We don't even have to say anything else. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go uh, hit the bathroom break real quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like I, I love this topic. You know, I write about this topic quite a bit, and this is definitely in my wheelhouse. And I Wait, what's a with, wheelhouse? What's a wheelhouse? A wheelhouse is like the area that I really specialize in. And oh. I work with mostly women when it comes to food and stress and finding ways to deal with their food obsession and all that type of stuff. And I relate to it. I've been there, done that. And I'm so happy that I don't do that. I, w I was never a yo-yo dieter. I was more kind of maybe up a little, down a little, like I'm a terrible dieter. So I didn't, I don't go up and down. But the mental anguish I can relate to with anyone. Oh, I was a yo-yo dieter. Yo-yoing, you know, like, and like the gal that Michelle saw on Facebook, as soon as I went on my first diet, I started gaining weight. And I was a skinny kid. I was like literally a little skinny kid, really sports oriented. And I started dieting at 13 years old. And from that first diet, I started to gain weight. And it it was an interesting thing because then that was, that created the yo-yo. Oh, I got to lose weight. And then I would lose weight and then it would get, come back immediately because it, all of the other steps were missed, right? The lifestyle steps. It was just like, focus on taking out this and focus on taking and deprive yourself of that and deprive yourself of this. It was terrible. And scales. I haven't had a scale in, I don't know, 20 years, but a scale. I used to get on the scale in the morning to see how much I weighed and then I would take a poop and then I would get back on the scale to see how much weight I lost. <laughs> right? It became yeah. crazy. Created insanity. And I think so many women are torturing themselves that way as well. And they weigh themselves at night and weigh themselves in the morning and after a salty meal and after a big meal and after vacation and after an airplane. And it's just, it's so stressful. Yeah. Makes me want to go out and eat a pizza. <laughs> and a chocolate cake. A pizza yeah. chocolate cake on top. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Totally. You guys know who Chris Masterjohn is? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's got a great little uh, podcast. If anyone listening, you like podcasts, you got to check out Chris Masterjohn. But um, it's, it's like really short, eight minutes. So I was just listening to one of those the other day from oh, him. He was talking about weight loss and he had a great quote. I wrote it down because I wanted to share it for this episode. He said, if you're always questioning why you don't have enough willpower, it's because you're putting too much of a burden on your willpower and you're not addressing... Uh, the other topics of the of his little uh, podcast episode, which were your emotions and your environment. Mm -hmm. I thought those really summarize the two areas that we don't talk about enough. You know, your emotions around food and also like your environment. Are you surrounded by piles of cookies and, and cakes and chips and people around you who are supportive or unsupportive makes a big difference? I think there's a third area though, and that is, I think, the chemical reaction. And I know some people say that if you um, are emotionally aware and this and that, you won't eat sugar. But I have found that the only way I can stay away from sugar is getting sugar out of my system. And when it's out of my system, I don't want it at all. And if it's in my system, it's all I want. And I have tried, you name it, every other techniques, studied everything. And that's just my body chemistry. And I find just knowing how your body works and what works for you is really, really important. And taking the time to figure that out is really, really important. Yeah. So Lisa is an addict. She just admitted that she is an addict. She totally. can't have the sugar anywhere near anything, right? And yeah. that's good that you know that about yourself because some people don't know that about themselves and they're like, well, how come I ate a whole sleeve of Oreos or whatever right. it is, right? They and I won't, you know, and I won't eat just anything. I am a little bit snobbish, like, like I'm on Martha's Vineyard and I found the best ice cream on Martha's Vineyard <laughs> <laughs> and the best flavor and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And knowing though, when I go home that I do have to take a break from sugar again, because it doesn't make me feel very good. I, you know, mm. I definitely allow it. I let it into my life at times, but I also know how to get it back out for most of the time. And that really works well for me. That sounds like a relationship. It is. It I is. have a relationship <laughs> with ice cream. <laughs> It's delicious. <laughs> well, doesn't that also speak to your environment a bit? Like in your house, if you kept a lot of great ice cream or great sweets, like that would be a real problem. But what if it's not there at all? 
Well, if it's in my house and I'm off sugar, it doesn't tempt me at all. So it can be, if it's not there, obviously I'm not going to go, I don't go out and buy it. But if it's there and I'm off sugar, it does not tempt me one little bit. Hmm. Yeah, my husband tells me like once in a while I'll buy granola because, you know, I can have a little tiny container and put some, you know, fun little milky thing on it. And uh, and he tells me, don't bring that granola in the house because if he finds it, he'll eat the whole bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can't stop. Yeah. Yeah. And that on. speaks to your environment piece, Michelle. Yes, yes, definitely. Don't bring dangerous stuff into your home. Your home should be your safe haven that when it comes to that granola. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it is though. You eat it and you explode. <laughs> <laughs> Even paleo granola, you know, it doesn't matter. No, this is straight up old fashioned granola. Oh, with the oats, the little honey and maple syrup and nuts and coconuts. And it's fun <laughs> for Yum. me because I can only, you know, I have a little tiny bit like this. And I'm like, okay, done. But not for him. It's not fun. I remember you saying the same thing about honey in your tea or having honey, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, That's I'm a, a honey yes. bear. Because <laughs> if there's a jar of honey in the in the pantry, well, who's gonna stop you from going to get it and digging in with the spoon? Yeah. Well, my last name is Beeman, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm allowed to have honey, no? Be? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're the honey bee. Well, and again, go ahead. on. No, I was just gonna say again, it's learning what works for you. And if your husband can't have granola in the house, don't bring the granola in the house. Like it's really not a big deal. You know, just work with who you are rather than trying to change who you are. That's very liberating, I think, for people. We're always trying to force ourselves to be a smaller eater or to be, you know, um, be a this or be a that. And we're working against our chemistry. And that's why it feels like such a struggle. But when we set strategies around who we are and what works for us, it can be something from a place of joy and ease. And that's what I feel is the key to longer term success with all this food stuff. I actually, I still bring the granola in the house, but I hide it behind <laughs> and he never finds it. Perfect. Good strategy. <laughs> I do the same thing in my house. <laughs> you hide it? You hide food? <laughs> and I make my husband hide his chocolate stash from me oh, unless funny. I'm wanting it. Yeah. I go to if I don't see it. Good. So oh. when people are uh, doing the dieting thing, the, uh, the, you know, if you back up like to the, the 70s and the 80s, right, there's so many different diets. We don't really see those so much anymore. You don't see too many people doing slim fast anymore. I think it's still out there, though. I think it is. I did it. Yeah. And you did it, right? But it was really popular at one point. In anyway, the 80s. <laughs> I just thought we could uh, speak briefly about the health repercussions of chronic dieting. Huge. Happening in people's, in your clients' bodies or maybe even in your own if you've been on diets your whole life. Well, I mean, I remember when I was chronically dieting, the first thing that happened was I was constipated, right? My body was, I, it just didn't, whether it was no fat or no this or no that, something stopped my colon from functioning properly, as well as my digestive system. So when I was dieting, I would go like once every two or three days. Wow. Yeah. Well, certainly within a no fat situation, that's going yeah. to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking along the lines of um, thyroid issues that can occur, you know, with severe calorie restriction or any sort of dietary restriction where your body's like, whoa. And your bones, not only thyroid, but your bones. And Same your way. organs, you know, your organs are, are, are expanding and shrinking as well as you're gaining weight. And it just puts a lot of pressure on your organs that's not supposed to be there. So I think there are so many health ramifications that people don't think about. All they think about is the, the size of their clothes. But you are putting tremendous chronic stress on your body. Yes, absolutely. As if we need more stress. I mean, you already got the stress of your life. Now you're putting this kind of stress on your body. I have... um. A couple of clients who have had gastric bypass surgery or the sleeve or you know, whatever they're doing these days, and you know they end up with lifelong digestive issues. Yeah, and mm -hmm. nutritional deficiencies. That's right. Yeah, like not absorbing what they're taking mm -hmm. in, and and that that's going to be for the rest of their life, and that has a downstream effect on other areas of their health. And that that's you're right. No one's thinking about that. They're just thinking about the size mm -hmm. of their clothes. Oh. So those are kind of the big ones that uh, that I've seen. 
you know, and not to mention, I remember when I was in high school, I, I too was a skinny, skinny kid, but my mom was always dieting. And so, of course, I started weighing myself at like eight and thinking, I better lose weight, I better lose weight. And so I remember one day in high school, I said, I'm not going to eat the whole day except an apple. And by, you know, four o'clock, I'm sobbing, you know, <laughs> I'm so down and depressed and starving. I go, I'm never doing this again, you know. Aww. And I was seriously like, I was so sad. And I said, I'm just not a dieter. And for some reason, I, I never did all those diets, you know, I just didn't I. Um, yeah, it didn't mean that I didn't want to lose weight. And it didn't mean I tried things, but I just was not a person to go on those diets. And sometimes I was in awe of people who could, you know, who could stick to a diet. But now I'm so happy because I do really believe that it's those small steady changes in your life that are everything. Well, ladies, it is tea time. I want to talk about how uh, tea, oddly, might be able to ward off the dieting mindset. And this segment, by the way, is brought to you by Mountain Rose Herbs. They happen to make delicious health-promoting teas, and you guys can check them out at mountainroseherbs.com slash lowercase hvr for Healthy View Radio. Now, I'm not talking about using teas as a laxative or like a detox tea that's going to help you lose weight. Nothing like that. I'm talking about the very real power of tea to relax the body and the mind, because I feel like yo-yo dieting is a form of anxiety. It's mm -hmm. saying, you know, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I'm not okay the way I am. I'm not good enough. I mean, that's very anxiety provoking. And so teas are known for their calming effect, especially teas that are caffeine free and especially, especially teas made with herbs that calm the body and the mind. So imagine if you're feeling stressed out, instead of reaching for the chips, the crunchy, the salty, or the sweet to, uh, to crunch on, your, that's one way to appease your anxiety. But something else you can do is go through the ritual of you know, boiling the water, steeping the tea, and sitting down with a mug full of comfort. I love Very that. different effect yeah. on mm -hmm. the body, right? Mm -hmm. You just bypass like 500 calories. That's one thing. <laughs> but aside from that, you're giving yourself what I think most of us need more of, and that's that slow down self care. Totally. So I got this to show you guys if you're watching on video, but if you're not, I'll just tell you what it is. Um, this is an example of what I'm talking about today, a tea by Mountain Rose Herbs that I find especially calming. It's called Quiet Child Tea, and it has a really lovely sweet flavor. Right here on the back, it says it includes spearmint, chamomile, catnip, and skull cap. Some of you may not be familiar with all of those, but they're all herbs traditionally used to soothe and to calm. Right, Andrea? Ah, uh, yes, I want that too <laughs> <now>. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful. So anyway, you guys can check that out at mountainroseherbs.com slash HVR. And today we have an interesting guest joining us. Her name is Stephanie Dodier. She's a nutritionist, emotional eating expert, founder of the Beyond the Food Academy and host of the Beyond the Food Show. Stephanie's integrative and comprehensive approach help women to stop overeating and emotional eating and free themselves from diets and end food obsession. And Stephanie has been there too. That's how uh, the going beyond the food movement was born. Her health journey began six years ago while she was working as a senior executive in a Fortune 500 corporation. After she collapsed on stage, she was diagnosed with multiple chronic conditions and she went on to search to find a solution. She found her passion and redirected her natural leadership ability to inspire women to transfer their, transform their relationship to food and ultimately themselves. And we will we'll be back with Stephanie right after the break. All right, I am going to bring Stephanie on here. I am going to share. I am. <laughs> I'm going to go take some wild, what was it? Wild child? Hey. Calm down. Uh, Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, girls. Hi, Stephanie. Oh, you look Do great. It. Great lighting over there. Yeah. Thank you. I do that for a living, apparently. So I've got it this figured out very well. Nice. nice. Stephanie, I'm going to be interviewing you today. It's Lisa. So I'm just trying to share our little video right now. Um, okay, here we go. So um, the last couple of minutes, I will give you a chance to tell everybody where to get more info about you. Okay. 
Good stuff. And we are live on Facebook right now. Yes. During the break. So just want to say hello to all our Facebook fans and anyone who has any questions for Stephanie, you can go ahead and put those in the comments. We always try to get to those as we go through the show, if we can. I like your little love in the background, Stephanie. <laughs> So I, I was I um I was doing some research on you ladies and I think Andrea you would love a lot of stuff that you don't see on camera. I've got crystals and sage, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Very nice. Oh. Doing research, you don't know what else she pulled up on you though. <laughs> I'll keep that secret. <laughs> you mean that small little jail stint that I did? Well, it was yeah. <laughs> the food there was awful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was really interested by the beginning of the discussion. I was just shaking my head the whole time, like, yep, yep, yep. So it's going to be a good conversation. Absolutely. We speak your language. Okay. I am back here. And get ready to come back. Here we go. Great. Okay. You're listening to Andrea Beeman, Lisa Lutan, and Michelle Fennighaus with Healthy View Radio. Do you have a question or comment for the show? Please call us right now at 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or send us an email from our Voice America radio page. You'll find connections to reach any of the hosts there. Now, back to Healthy View Radio. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Healthy View Radio, where we bring you the up to the minute health information in a digestible format. We have been talking today about saying no to yo yo dieting, and we have the perfect guest to join us on the show today. Stephanie Dodier is a nutritionist and emotional eating expert who helps women stop overeating and emotional eating and free themselves from diets and end food obsession. Stephanie, welcome to our show. I'm so excited to be here with you. The conversation so far has been amazing. So can't wait to yeah. contribute. Oh, awesome. <laughs> well, we're so excited to have you here. Stephanie, we like to start all of our guests with a couple of questions to get to know you a little bit better. So first of all, what did you have for breakfast today? I did a frittata with whatever was left in my fridge. Oh, yum. I love that. It was delicious. <clears throat> okay. What is the one thing you do every day that has the greatest impact on your life? I meditate every morning. And that for me has enabled me to actually have a better handle on my thoughts. And we'll get into that during the conversation. But it's been a game changer for me. Amen to that. And mm -hmm. the last question is, what is your guilty pleasure? Dark chocolate. <laughs> What, what percentage? 99%. <laughs> Nine. Ooh, I like, I like 89 or like 90 in there, but 99 is pretty dark. Do you like dip it in something? No, I just, no. I got, I built that savor and I actually went to Portugal a couple of years ago and I actually tasted like the best dark 99%, a hundred percent dark chocolate. And from there it just became a passion. Like, I search for different dark chocolate. It's like coffee, if you want. It's it's a passion of mine. Yeah, you'll, you'll have to send me some of the ones you like because I'm kind of right up there with you. I love that. So, Stephanie, how do you help women and the yo-yo dieting cycle? So, it's at the beginning of the conversation you were talking about the size of the pants and why we're all obsessed with changing our body. When you look at the reason why women diet, there's a statistic that says 91% of women engage in dieting because they're unhappy with their body. So we know logically that chasing health is the good thing to do. But unfortunately, our primal brain, our brain stem, our survival center in our brain sees the fact that we don't like our body and that there is a potential for us to be rejected by lovers, society, and that is more powerful than anything else. So if you know a little bit about your brain, there's kind of two parts to your brain, conscious mind and subconscious mind. Subconscious mind is 90% of the power of your mind. 90% of our food behavior, food choices, comes from our subconscious mind. And here's the thing, willpower has no control on your subconscious mind. 
And dieting is based on willpower. So women, just like you and me, enter into the cycle of yo-yo dieting, wanting to change their body because of the fear of rejection or fear of not being loved. And then they enter in this process with willpower, which actually will not be able to change their food choices. So that's where I help women. So what will work? We know willpower doesn't work. And some people naturally do need to lose weight for health reasons, you know, and so what is the answer? The answer is actually in changing our mindset. So one of the primary element that we need to look at, just like for me in my own journey, when I needed to lose weight, I went to what I knew which was dieting, right? Because I was told by my doctor, if I needed to be healthier, I needed to lose weight. Unfortunately, that's industry fed by the weight loss and the food industry, and it's not what actually works. So what we need to look at is our thoughts and our mindset. So you were talking about that, I think it's yesterday or last week's show about the power of your thoughts. You need to change your intention behind weight loss. So you doing it, and I call it wearing your glasses. Do you wear your glasses of not enough? I'm too big. I'm too fat. I potentially will be rejected and I need to fix myself. I'm sure you're all familiar with that mindset, right? Sure. Or do I want to grow? Do I believe that I can change the person that I am from a place of I am enough? So to me, that is the first step. I totally agree. But let's say I get to that step. Let's say I realize I am enough and I want to be, you know, healthy and I want to lose weight for all the right reasons. What do I do then? Then the choices will come automatically from a place of health. So you won't have to force and impose yourself rules and restriction, it will come naturally because when you do love yourself fundamentally, choices are in alignment to what will bring you health, pleasure, and joy. So it doesn't become what I need to do, but rather what my body wants. So the other element that I wanna add into this is how we eat. So we talked a lot about why we eat, but the other element that's very important is how we engage with food. So to your point, Lisa, I'm at a place where I make good choices. But for many of us, eating is just part of the things we do in life in a hurry, being productive, and actually not engaging with food. And that's a big problem because when you don't engage with food, your brain doesn't perceive the signal of satiety and pleasure that should come with food. And then all day long, you're seeking to feel full and to have the pleasure you should be feeling when you're actually engaging with food because food triggers pleasure in the reward center. And it's part of the human being function of seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. So if you don't feel those signals of pleasure, you're constantly going to be seeking for pleasure in your life. So true. Is that what you mean when you say to go beyond food? Exactly. So... For my own journey, I've dieted. My first diet was at 14, so very similar to many of you. And for me, it's been my whole life dieting and losing weight and gaining weight and losing weight. And I even did it to part, talking earlier about paleo and keto. I've done them all. And I became an expert in each one of them only to regain the weight. And regaining the weight, not on eating junk food, not on eating McDonald's, on eating keto bread and paleo cookies and all that stuff. Like I was, I was, I was overweight, was going to the doctor and I was healthy. The problem was why I was eating and how I was eating. So I realized that the solution for most of the women is to go beyond the food. Instead of tackling the food behavior, we need to understand what feeds the food behavior. I love that you just brought that up because there are so many people that do overeat healthy food, you know, and we think if we're just eating the right foods, we're going to be fine, but we're not. And if we don't get to those issues underneath, we will never address the real issues. So I love that you brought that up. Thank you. Um, why do we self-sabotage that? We're on this great path, we're doing great, and then bam, 
You know, we just need to bring ourselves back to this other place. So part of the part of what my world makes a difference is I combine spirituality with science. So neuroscience has revealed over the last 20 years, because neuroscience is the study of the brain and, and nervous system is very recent because we never had the tools before to actually look what goes on in the brain. And neuroscience has told us that self-sabotage is a result of engaging our survival system. So the brain stem into the primate, the primal brain, and then we engage it. And then we want to avoid pain. That's there's two big desire in the human seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. That's what allowed us to evolve as a species to where we are today. So we are self-sabotaging because we don't want to feel pain. And when we try to change a diet, we change our habits, we grow, we expand, and we are into a setting of new behavior. And that's free key to your brain. It's literally engaging your survival brain and your brain's like, heck no, we're not doing this. Let's go back to the old habits. So the self-sabotage is the avoidance of pain. So you, part of the process, you need to become comfortable with being in a state of fear, being in a state of change. And that comes from a place of, whoops, love, whatever's behind me. So then from a, a practical place, somebody who feels they're about to self-sabotage, it comes back to the, okay, what the self-inquiry, what's really yeah. going on? What's the fear around this? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. A lot of mindfulness as well. So mm -hmm. a lot of my programs are built around mindfulness. So we go through, there's a basic exercise, we call it the crave cure formula. So a lot of the craving are self-sabotaging, right? So the simple fact of bringing back your mind into a place of being present in the moment, just a couple, maybe five or six breaths will actually disengage that survival system and actually puts you back in the present moment. And then you can make a choice from a conscious place instead of reaction. Hmm. So how do we end this vicious cycle that so many women are on? What's the first step? In my belief, the first step is to look at your mindset. So when we work with women in my world, we don't talk about food. So for those that have been stuck in the world of yo-yo dieting, step away from seeking your solution in food and look at what's driving the behavior, the why. Then second step is how we eat. And then the third step is what we eat actually becomes easy and natural. So then I can give you the education and then you'll make the choice from a place of love. So start with your mindset, start with seeking help. And I'll talk about something that I have for you at the end that can help you change your mindset and how you're relating to dieting and the food. And what kind of results have people had by taking this approach? The people you know that you work with. <clears throat> what's interesting is the goal starts with weight loss. And then through the process, it becomes about being happy. Because what I realized, even though it's keto, paleo, and I went to nutrition school, I was unhappy. Because my whole goal in life was to lose weight. I, I didn't enjoy anything else in my life because I wouldn't allow it because I wasn't at the weight I was supposed to be at. So women becomes happy. They rekindle their relationship with their husband and with their children. And then they lose weight naturally, which means from a biological standpoint, slowly. Because if you drastically lose weight, you will sabotage your metabolism and a whole bunch of other mechanisms in your body. So natural weight loss is gradual and slow, but they really don't care because they're happy. Right. Now you had a, you know, a collapse on stage in your former life that led you to this work. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. My crazy story. So um, first that was at the age of 14 and then I was raised by two loving parents, but my dad drove me to be extremely competitive. So anything that I did in life, I chased to be number one, which I did in my corporate career. So I work, no word of a lie, 80 to 100 hours a week. Me too. <laughs> Why were we doing that, Lisa, right, is the question. I was I know. doing that because I wasn't enough. And I'm wearing a, a chain right now that says I am enough. 
Yeah. I wasn't enough. I needed to freaking prove myself by being the first female to do that and being the, the youngest vice president and this and that. And then my nervous system collapsed, like literally shut right down, full on panic attack, passed out, hospital. And then I never took the time to go to a doctor, diagnosed that they with a whole bunch of disease, depression and anxiety and spent four more years thinking that weight loss was the solution until I found mindfulness and this other side of the world that's like, oh my God, why has nobody told me that before? <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Amazing. And that became my purpose is to what nobody's told me to make it a message to other women. So somebody tells them because the problem is the message that we carry, the weight loss in the fitness industry doesn't want it to get out because once you find that, there's no more need of product and diets. You self-regulate. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So tell us um, where people can go and learn about you and your programs and what programs you're offering right now. Absolutely. So what I have for you guys is a basic audio training on what I just talked about. So mindset, talk about how to regulate your emotion, that little mindfulness formula that I was talking about. So you can go to my website, stephaniedodier.com slash training. And that will bring you to a page. And then I'll send you, once you give me your first name, your email, an audio training that you can pop in the car and listen to your way to work. And it will give you exercise to actually do to start changing your mindset, even just understanding where you're at with your mindset and then understand the consequence of it on your weight. And then from there, I have a two main program, one called Claim Your Food Freedom, which is self-taught. It's 21 days and I'm teaching you the basic of the mind. And then I have an extended program, which is 12 week, which is the Going to Beyond the Food Academy, where I work with women's and groups to help them put the change in their life that they need. And that's when they become happy and joyful. That's amazing. And what's one quick little thing that people can start doing today to just start feeling better about this? So for me, the very first thing is to like, it's mindfulness based. So close your eyes. And I do that every time I do public speaking, close your eyes for one minute and take three, four, five deep breaths through your nose very specifically, and then you will see your system, which is engaged in fight or flight, actually will drop and rest and digest. And then all of a sudden you will feel better just engaging with your breath. That was awesome advice. Stephanie, it was so great having you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, girls. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks. Well, we're going to be taking a short break. And when we come back, we'll be speaking with integrative nutrition health coach, Latha Prabhakar. So in the meantime, we would love for you to stop and leave us a review at healthyviewradio.com slash review. And stay tuned for more Healthy View Radio after the break. <laughs> Thank Stephanie, you so much, awesome. Stephanie. It was awesome. Thank you. And Lisa, I'm going to see you at Mindshare. Am I correct? I'm not going to be there this year. I'm so bummed. Okay. Yeah. Send me some chocolate info. I will. <laughs> we need to share our sources. <laughs> Take Bye. care. Bye. You're not right. going to be at Mindshare. You're going to be at Chocolate Share. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Latha. Hi, Andrea. Uh, in the next segment, I'm going to be interviewing you. We're going to go about 10 minutes, and then uh, I'll, I'm going to ask you questions, and these girls will hop in and ask questions if they have any as well. And, um, and then you'll, when I say where can people find you, you tell them your website and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you I, feeling? Oh, I'm super excited to have this conversation with all you ladies. Oh, good. We're excited to have you here, and you look great. I like your outfit. I like your look. Is that a... Um, uh, what what is that tiger called? A, a, a tiger lily? No, the no. flower. Oh, I have no idea. Oh, it's an orchid. It's an orchid. orchid. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great because you know orchids don't they represent the feminine genitalia? Genitalia? Do orchid? they? I didn't yes, know that. Pull it up you and just look at it. Scandalized her. <laughs> <laughs> she's the sacred feminine girl. 
Right, sacred, <laughs> sacred feminine cycle. So it's appropriate that she has an orchid. And t- go look. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Get ready to come back. Here we go. <laughs> You're listening to Andrea Beeman, Lisa Lutan, and Michelle Fennighaus with Healthy View Radio. Do you have a question or comment for the show? Please call us right now at 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or send us an email from our Voice America radio page. You'll find connections to reach any of the hosts there. Now, back to Healthy View Radio. Welcome back to Healthy View Radio. This is the place where we get you the heck off the yo-yo diets and onto eating real food and living a happier and healthier life. My name is Andrea Beeman, and in this section of the show, we, intru- we want to introduce you to an exciting up-and-coming talent in the health and wellness field. Today, we have with us Latha Prabhakar. She's an integrative nutrition health coach, and she calls herself the Moon Cycle Coach. After suffering from painful, irregular cycles and being diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome and infertility, she found her inner healing through holistic methods. After healing, she conceived naturally and had a beautiful home birth. That ignited a passion within her for helping women experience soulful healing of their own feminine cycle, just like she did. She specializes in mentoring women suffering from PCOS and infertility. She coaches them on diet, lifestyle, wellness, nutrition, energy balancing, and spirituality to experience their own soulful healing. And you can find out more about her work at sacredfemininecycle.com, but we are lucky enough to have her here with us today. So welcome, Latha. Thank you, Andrea. Did you, uh, the topic of our show today was yo-yo dieting. Do, have you struggled with any yo-yo dieting at any point in your life? It has not been diet from the perspective of losing weight for me, but I've always struggled with craving sugar, lots and lots of sugar. So my guilty pleasure was always chocolate. <laughs> and, yeah, you, you and Lisa here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it was not a single chocolate. It was a bag of Linda Lind chocolates in one sitting. That used to be my mm. sugar craving. That's a lot of chocolate. Mm, yes. So uh, can you share with our audience how you got started on this path to your sacred feminine cycle? Yes. So seven years ago, I was diagnosed with a condition called polycystic ovaries. So that condition is one of the most painful conditions for women to have because the cycles are irregular and it's extremely painful. And there are a whole bunch of other conditions that come along with it. So uh, it includes things like body and facial hair and um, weight gain around the abdominal area. And a lot of women that have this condition also have uh, weight gain. Uh, For me, it was more of uh, body and facial hair and irregular cycles, painful cycles. And after every cycle, I would be so anemic that I would almost have to go to a doctor to get blood transfusion. It used to be that bad for me. Wow. And uh, when I went to the doctor, the doctor said, you know what, you have to go on birth control. And, you know, it will kind of regularize your periods, but uh, that is not going to help with your fertility issues. And then once you decide to conceive, come back to us and, you know, we have IUI, IVF, you know, medical field is really advanced, you know, so it's not a big deal. And I walked out there feeling like a piece of crap, you know, because it is supposed to be a joyful, uh, wonderful process to be pregnant and to have a child. And then I was like, I didn't want needles and sticks everywhere, you know, uh, uh, probing and prodding me. And then that day I actually watched the documentary Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. And that was the true inspiration for me to start. And then I said, you know what, this guy healed from a condition that almost no people have. And mine is not a condition that no people have. One in four women have polycystic ovaries. So it's a very common condition. So that's when I decided, you know what, I'll try whatever, I'll do whatever it takes. And that day I had like uh, the most energy to quit sugar. And from that day on, I was like able to get, I mean, let go of my chocolate cravings. And I started, I tried a whole bunch of uh, foods and I'm a vegetarian by uh, birth and by choice. So uh, that was a big factor as well. You know, I couldn't do diets like paleo diet, keto diet and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I was like, you know, 
vegetables and fruits, they can help me heal whatever it is. And I tried a whole bunch of uh, different uh, things. I cook a lot at home. I really love to cook. So uh, that was a good advantage for me. It took me about three years, but then I was able to conceive naturally. And uh, I was holding my daughter in my hand. And in that moment, the, I mean, it was a home birth and, you know, I was not screaming, no yelling. I was meditating when I was having my daughter. Uh, nobody knew what was happening outside of the room. They didn't even know if I was in labor. It was so peaceful. And then I was wow. holding my daughter in my hand. And, you know, I had this uh, surge of raw feminine energy going through my body. It was like so powerful. And I was like, you know what, if I can do this, I want to help other women do this. Because, you know, when I was uh, doing all of this uh, for three years, I had connected with so many other women that had this issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a week's time, I registered to IIN to be a health coach. And I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just had a child, but uh, um, I did it anyways. I, was, I, I have a full-time job. I'm a software engineer. So uh, with that and this, I had no clue how, how I was doing it, but family really supported me a lot. And I did it anyways. And uh, since then, I've been working with women uh, uh, conceive and uh, um, heal their bodies from polycystic ovaries. Oh, it's fantastic. I was on your website and I loved reading. It said, um, we're made to feel like our bodies are foreign to us. Why do you think or what do you think happened that women got so disconnected from their own bodies? For me personally, um, I think women are taught from the time they're born, they're taught to um, be very um, shy, humble, and to not be open and not be honest about their bodies. And a lot of times, um, you know, the kind of advertisements we see, the kind of uh, magazines we read, the kind of uh, newspaper articles and uh, all that, you know, they're promoting women to almost an imperfect, I mean, to a very high standards of perfection. And we are constantly seeing that and we are made to feel like we are not enough. No matter what we do, we are not enough. You, to ha you have to use this other cream, you have to do this, you have to do that. And uh, I think uh, it starts when we, when we are teenagers and by the time we are adults, we are almost like, I don't know many girls or ladies that feel totally okay with their bodies because you know we are constantly bombarded with all these things and we are constantly being judged. Uh, why are you looking this way? Why are you doing this way? Uh, so on and so forth. So uh, we don't have a whole bunch of support in that area. Yeah, so um, I also saw on your website, uh, we feel out of control at the mercy of our hormones, never knowing whether we'll be full of energy or feeling like an emotional wreck. And then we give our power away to another box of chocolates, curling up in a ball, exhausted and aching. So is this what your clients go through as well? Yes, uh, that and even more. Um, we live in a world where, you know, there's a lot of masculine energy. Women are expected to be uh, in tune with their masculine energy. So they slowly start getting out of touch with their feminine energy. Women are supposed to function in cycles. They are not supposed to be strong and happy and uh, going throughout the 30 days of the month. We actually work in sync with the cycles of the moon. Um, so, you know, our energies are uh, ebbing and flowing based on the energies of the moon, depending on where you are in your cycle. So you can actually almost, if you are charting your energies and your cycle, you almost can um, correlate it to the four seasons, summer, spring, fall, winter. You know, that's the kind of energies that go through our bodies. And when we truly learn to accept that is when we can get over all the painful suffering. But, you know, we are not allowed to do that. We have to work for five days a week or six days a week. Some women do two jobs. And women, as it is, have, um, have it harder than men, uh, usually, because you know, they have to take care of the family, household work and uh, jobs and all that. And, you know, that brings in a lot of masculine energy. So, yeah, a lot of my clients do feel that kind of uh, pain. And, you know, some women almost cannot function like normal human beings during those three to five days of their cycle. Um, they are extremely painful and they have to take medication to get rid of the pain. They almost feel like it's hopeless out there for women. Yeah, it's like a, the woman's body goes through an operation every single month, right? And losing blood and, and they're... Uh, expected to continue to work at the pace that they're working instead of resting, which is 
yeah, what we should be doing. So how did you um, connect to the moon and to your cycle? Um, was that a spiritual tradition or how did you come in connection with that? So uh, that was one of the good things about uh, being born in, in India. So women are given rest for those three days, although it's become a very, uh, a, a source of social stigma right now, women are supposed to take off for the three days of their cycle. They're supposed to rest. They're supposed to not work, not do anything. All they're supposed to do is eat and sleep. Somebody else in the family is going to provide for them, provide for the other people in the family. Wow. So um, I, uh, I mean, even being born in India, that was uh, a source of social stigma. They're like, oh, you still follow that, you know, that kind of a thing. And only after coming here, I started charting my cycles because, you know, I didn't know what was wrong with my cycle. So I started charting my energies, my uh, temperatures and a whole bunch of other things. And then I was like, oh my God, this looks like a, a sinus wave for me. You know, what's going on here? And then I started uh, coming across a few good books and everything. Then that's when I was able to make the connection between the uh, cycles of the moon and the cycles of women. And guess what? The moment I started doing that, my cycle started getting more regular. Oh, that's wow. great. You connected to the universe. Yeah. <laughs> in a, yeah, exactly. in a bigger way. yeah. Uh, so how do you work with your clients when they come to you? What are the steps that you put them through? So I usually uh, have a three-step process for all my clients uh, that have this issue. So initially, uh, the first thing is to have a stress-free diagnosis. A lot of women come to me and they don't even know what's wrong. They just know that they have irregular cycles or painful cycles or whatever it is that is they're going through. So the first thing is to hold the safe space for them when they're getting the diagnosis. Because you know, if you go to a doctor today and you have polycystic ovaries, you come back uh, with a diagnosis of polycystic ovaries, the doctors say, there's no way you're going to be cured from this. So this is a lifelong condition. And there are medicines to manage it, but uh, that's that's about it. There's no cure for it. So it's it's a hard thing for a lot of women. And you know the fact that it uh, leads to infertility and a whole bunch of other issues is not a fun diagnosis to have at all. So uh, women come back and you know they don't feel like themselves. For a lot of women, being a mom is that energy that they truly need to connect to. And when they come back with a diagnosis of infertility, they feel like uh, their whole purpose in life is not fulfilled because they cannot have a child. So uh, they end up spending more on IUI, IVF and all that. So the, the thing is, um, I walk them through a safe space where you know they, they are able to connect to the positive aspect of getting this diagnosis. It doesn't always necessarily have to mean it's a negative thing. So I do that and then I talk about the diet and lifestyle changes that they have to go through, a whole bunch of detox of their environment, food, water and everything. So this one gets them physically uh, in a good, good space. And then I walk them through the emotional and the spiritual healing that, that needs to happen as well. So if you look at the energy, the root chakra and the sacral chakra are blocked for women. So I help them with that. And women tend to hold on to a lot of trauma in their womb area. So that needs a whole bunch of healing as well. So I, it's, it's a three-step process. So the first thing is a safe, stress-free diagnosis. The second step is the physical healing and the detox. And the third step is uh, beyond physical, which is like connecting to the universe or connecting to God and connecting to the moon energy. So I walk them through the whole thing there in the third uh, part of the program. That's fantastic. So uh, where can people go to learn more about you? Uh, people can find me on uh, Facebook, Lata Prabhakar, the Moon Cycle Coach. And also on Instagram, my handle is uh, the Moon Cycle Coach. And my website is sacredfemininecycle.com. So there is a contact me form below. And it also has my Facebook link and my Instagram link. So people can connect to me from there. Well, thank you for sharing your sacred feminine wisdom with us. Um, and I hope a lot of people go and check you out, you know, because they got to get, they got to reconnect and get back. Yes. Uh, I truly would love to uh, talk to women and help them out if they're going through some issues around this, um, because the kind of uh, results they see is totally miraculous. Oh, that's great. Thanks for bringing miracles to the world, Latha. Okay. So ladies, can, uh, can you give us a, a quickie of your big takeaways from today's show? 
Well, my big takeaway is don't ignore the emotional and spiritual pieces in your healing, whether it's around food or any health condition. It's not just about the kale. You know, we really have to go inside and, and look at what's really going on in our life in so many dimensions. Yeah, I was thinking something about the same, Lisa. I was thinking we, uh, the, both of our guests mentioned how their body healed or self-regulated, and I think our bodies can self-regulate. It's not a matter of fixing the symptom or you know getting rid of these five pounds or these 10 pounds or these 100 pounds. But when we uh, fix our mindset and we fix our environment, and we fix the quality of the food that we're eating, the body self-regulates. All the symptoms start to go away. Yeah, it's, it's miraculous, right? Like Latha said, um, you know, like they're given a diagnosis of something, right? Oh, you can't heal this. You're going to be infertile for the rest of your life. And she's like, no, we're just going to switch some things up, connect you back <laughs> to, to the universe and the moon and good quality food and all that stuff. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Love it. <Yeah. laughs> So uh, for those of you that missed any part of our show, you can watch us every week or you can you go back and watch any of the recordings on healthyviewradio.com. You could check us out on iTunes. Uh, and we would love, love, love if you could leave us a review like this lovely gal did. Her name was Ayla, A-Y-L-A. She said, I've been a big fan of Healthy View Radio, and I think Lisa, Andrea, and Michelle have great chemistry. They're funny, engaging, and have been able to attract excellent guests. Fun, interesting, and have definitely learned a lot. Thanks, gals. So that's my kind of gal. And I want to thank everybody for coming out to hang with us today and learn this awesome information. And we'll see you again next Thursday at 12 noon live. Or you could check us out on any of the other things that we got. <laughs> all those things. Like iTunes, you know, all those other YouTube, things. <laughs> Facebook. Wait, we're everywhere. We're everywhere that you are. All right. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.